You all have been telling me for years that I need one of these and I finally took the plunge. <laughs> Here it is, my first ever Instant Pot Recipes video. These are my first attempts at Instant Pot Recipes, so here we go. Tonight is fajita night, or so I hope. <laughs> I have some beef in the freezer that I would really like to not be in my freezer anymore. So I thought that I would throw that into the Instant Pot with some fajita seasoning and a little bit of oil and water, get that going. And then I have just some fixings to go along with the fajitas. We'll probably do some beans and some rice, maybe some like sauteed bell peppers, chips and salsa, things like that. So I'm hoping that this is gonna work out because it's already 5.37 and I'd really like to have dinner ready in about an hour or so. So hopefully the Instant Pot is going to help me accomplish that. Let's see what we can come up with. I am going to just keep it really simple tonight. I have these two cuts of beef. I wish this was flank steak, it's not. This is actually flat iron steak, which I know is not ideal for fajitas, but it's been sitting in my freezer for a little while, so I wanna go ahead and use it, so we're gonna try it. I have a cup of water, and I'm gonna use probably a couple tablespoons of olive oil with that as well, and I'm going to mix in this fajita seasoning. I got this in a six pack from Thrive, and it was a pretty good deal. I was pretty pleased with that. Normally I would make my own seasoning mixes, but I do sometimes have taco seasoning, ranch mix, salad dressing seasonings. So having something like this on hand can make it really easy for nights like tonight, whenever I just wanna get it going and not have to make you know my own seasoning mix. So I'm going to mix this all together. I'm gonna put it into the Instant Pot and I probably need to do a little bit of research on exactly how much time is needed. I think it is around 30 minutes, but I'll let you know once we get it in the Instant Pot. Okay, so I have the steaks and the fajita seasoning and the water and the olive oil here in the Instant Pot. And I am going to go ahead and pressure cook this for 20 minutes. So these are just kind of small cuts of meat. We're gonna see what that turns out. So I'm going to go ahead and press pressure cook and I'm going to go ahead and put it on 20 minutes. I could put it on the meat setting. I wonder what the meat setting would do. Let's see, meat setting says 35. I think that's too much for these small pieces of meat. So I'm going to do 20 minutes. It'll take a few minutes to come up to pressure and cook and then we'll see where we are at. I forgot to mention, I also made sure that I moved this to seal beforehand. I think that's very important with the pressure cooker. This is actually not an Instant Pot. It is an Instant Pot brand slow cooker. It's called the Instant Pot Aura. I get a lot of questions about this. This is not a pressure cooker. It is a slow cooker and it has some other bells and whistles here. I got it on Amazon. If it's still available, I'll leave it linked in the description box, but we're gonna use it today to make some rice because it has a rice setting on it that is really convenient. I've used it a couple of times before, so we're gonna make some Mexican style or Spanish style rice and I'm gonna keep it really easy. Right now, I have the Instant Pot Aura on saute function. I am sauteing about half of an onion, which I chopped up. Once this onion starts to get translucent, I'm going to add just a little bit of garlic. I'm gonna saute the onions and the garlic together, and there's just a little bit of olive oil in here, by the way. I'm gonna let that saute together for just about a minute. And now I'm adding two cups of white rice. And I wanna let that rice saute just a little bit with the onions and the garlic and the olive oil. I am turning the saute function off. And now I am going to add one can of Rotel diced tomatoes with green chili. One can of tomato sauce. This is just a little eight ounce can of tomato sauce. I am going to take a shortcut tonight and I'm going to use another packet of this fajita seasoning from Thrive Market. If you wanted to, you could just season this with a little bit of salt, pepper, oregano, garlic powder, onion powder, and chili powder. And I'm also going to stir in three cups of water. And once that's all mixed together, I'm gonna to pop the lid on and I'm gonna switch it to the rice setting. And the manual says that when you are cooking rice, you want, when you're cooking white rice, you want to go ahead and cook it on the low setting. A bit of YouTuber probs, y'all. <laughs> My Thrive Market box actually came a few days ago, and these tortilla chips almost did not survive to tonight's dinner. In fact, see, there's just a few of them left. Fortunately, I ordered some more. These are fantastic. This also 
just barely made it to tonight. It's about half gone. It is the smoky chipotle salsa from Thrive Market and it is fantastic. So we're gonna have this as well alongside our dinner tonight. And I'll probably also maybe heat up some refried beans. We'll see. And we'll just get all the fixings out for the fajitas and we'll be able to make up some plates. It'll be a super easy, tasty, delicious dinner. Okay, confession, time got away from me. We were enjoying a beer with the neighbors out on the patio, and so this has been natural releasing for plenty of time. And I did go ahead and move the little knob to venting, and it's already ready to open up. So we're gonna get to see what this is like, and I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> because <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to have worked out or cooked long enough. We shall see. I'm hoping that I can shred it up for the fajitas. Today's video is sponsored by Thrive Market. Thrive Market is a membership-based online grocery retailer and they're on a mission to make healthy living easy and accessible for everybody. I have been very impressed with the wide array of products that Thrive Market offers on their website, especially products that cater to a specific style of eating. Like if you're eating keto, if you're eating Mediterranean, if you need to eat gluten-free, if you need to eat dairy-free. And Thrive Market does have a guaranteed savings policy, so if you do happen to find a better price on a product elsewhere, they will match it. I also really like that Thrive Market has their own house brand of some pantry staples. There are a lot of those kinds of items that I have been purchasing, things like seasonings and oils, pasta, which is something that I haven't always been able to find in my grocery stores recently. Some of those shelves have been empty, so I've been ordering a lot of my pasta from Thrive Market. Thrive Market does offer a membership option where you just pay for the membership from month to month, but the best value is actually to just purchase a year's membership up front, and then it comes out to less than $5 per month. Right now, Thrive Market is offering a sweet deal for new members. When you follow the link in the description box below, thrivemarket.com slash cminimom, and you sign up for a membership, you can get 40% off of your first order, 40%, plus a free gift, which is worth $50. So that free gift in and of itself almost pays for a yearly membership. I also really like that Thrive Market has a one-to-one -one membership initiative. So for each membership that is purchased, they are going to gift one to a family in need. And Thrive Market isn't just for food. They actually offer a wide array of products, including baby items, personal care items, beauty items, household and cleaning supplies. So you can order those items as well and have them shipped right to your door. So thank you again to Thrive Market for sponsoring today's video and be be sure to visit that link in the description box, thrivemarket.com slash cminimom. When you sign up for a membership, you're going to get 40% off of your first order plus a free gift worth $50. Here's what I'm going to use to make a creamy garlic Parmesan chicken pasta in the Instant Pot. So we'll see how this turns out. I have about a pound of chicken breast, which I went ahead and cut into small pieces. I'm gonna use some minced garlic, probably about a teaspoon or so. This is one onion, one small onion, which I chopped up in my little hand rotary chopper thingy. One cup of heavy cream and three tablespoons of butter. Two ounces of cream cheese, which is four tablespoons of cream cheese. This is a little less than a cup of freshly grated parm. All that's going to be added at the end of the recipe. I'm going to need three cups of chicken broth, some olive oil, and I'm also going to use one pound of pasta. I'm going to use this bow tie pasta. I think any, you know, shortcut pasta would do. You could use elbows, you could use shells probably, but this is what I have, so I'm going to use it. And then this is the seasoning mix for the chicken. So in here is one, two, three teaspoons of garlic powder, paprika, and Italian seasoning. So one teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of paprika, and three teaspoons of Italian seasoning, and then salt and pepper to taste. And the first thing that I'm going to do is actually toss the chicken pieces in the seasoning before we get it into the instant pot to saute. 
The recipe that inspired me is from eatwell101.com and I will leave that recipe linked in the description box below. But as you saw, I did toss my chicken with the seasonings and then I put my Instant Pot on saute mode and I sauteed those little chicken pieces in a little bit of olive oil for a few minutes on their own and then I added the chopped onion. I let those saute together for another minute or so and then I added a few teaspoons of minced garlic and stirred that all around for about another 60 seconds or so and then I turned my Instant Pot completely off before I added the rest of my ingredients. So I added my pasta and my chicken broth and I gave that a bit of a stir and I realized that I, there wasn't quite enough liquid. I, I wanted a little bit more liquid so I added about a half a cup more water so I could make sure that the pasta was completely submerged. And then here you see me kind of struggling with the Instant Pot as a newbie. <laughs> trying to get the lid on securely. Once I was finally able to secure the lid appropriately, I chose the manual pressure cook function for just three minutes. So I took the time all the way down to three minutes. Of course, it takes a few minutes for the Instant Pot to come up to pressure before it starts cooking, but it just took three minutes. And then I let it natural release for about 10 minutes before I turned the vent to manual release. And once the little red thingy madoodle popped up to let me know it was safe to remove the lid, I went ahead and took the lid off and gave the pasta a stir. And I was very pleased with how it cooked. It was cooked to al dente and then I was able to add the rest of the ingredients. So I put in the cream cheese, the Parmesan, and the heavy cream, and I actually left the butter out because I just didn't think it was necessary. It was plenty rich without it. So I stirred those things in, and then I just put the lid back on. I didn't turn the Instant Pot back on. I just put the lid back on and let the heat from the pasta kind of melt everything together. And then after about five minutes, I took the lid back off and stirred it, and this is how it turned out. And this was so, so good. My kids loved this. This. We had enough for leftovers for a couple of lunches and everybody fought over who got to have the leftover Parmesan chicken pasta. So highly, highly recommend. I was very pleased with how this turned out. Just me coming on here to say that this pasta, <laughs> so good. Turned out fantastic. I was a little scared of using the Instant Pot, but we got it done. It's delicious and really, it did come together pretty quickly, I gotta say. I wanted to try making a potato soup in the Instant Pot because potatoes are something that typically take a while to cook on the stove, in the oven, or in the crock pot. So I was really interested to see if I could make this work in the Instant Pot really quickly. And I had some russet potatoes hanging out in my pantry that really, really needed to get used up. So I looked around my kitchen and I was able to find some other things that I could use to make this potato soup. I had half of an onion, plus just a bag of, maybe a quarter of a bag left of little baby carrots. And I'm gonna chop those things up with um, some minced garlic as well to throw into the pot along with the potatoes. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of butter so that I can saute those things together before I add everything else you'll see. I'm gonna use about three cups of chicken broth, which I'm just gonna make from broth base. And I'm seasoning this with a, ta a teaspoon each of garlic powder, Italian seasoning, onion powder, and then salt and pepper to taste. Plus, not pictured right here, is a cornstarch slurry and a little bit of half and half, which we will add later on after the potatoes are done cooking. So to start off, I peeled and chopped my potatoes and I set those aside. And I also chopped up my onion and my carrots. And I went ahead and put the butter into the Instant Pot and I turned it to saute function. And I'm going to saute the onions and carrots together for a few minutes on their own until the onions start to turn translucent. I turned the Instant Pot off and I added my potatoes. And it's then that I remembered that I was also going to add some garlic. I would have liked to have sauteed that for a minute or so with the onions and carrots but that's okay, I'll just put it in along with everything else here. So you see the potatoes, I left mine pretty chunky. I mean, they're pretty large chunks of potatoes, but I'm gonna add my garlic and all of my seasonings and then my water as well. I stirred that all together to make sure that the seasonings were well combined and I also wanted to make sure that the potatoes were completely submerged in the liquid. And now I'm just going to secure the lid, make sure that it is on tightly, that it is secure and that it is also set to seal. And I'm choosing the manual pressure cook function again and I'm going to set the time to six minutes. So it will take a few minutes to come up to pressure and then it will cook everything for six minutes. While that's cooking, I'm going to make a cornstarch slurry. I used about a quarter cup of water and about two tablespoons of cornstarch. This is just to thicken the soup. If you like it thinner, you could probably leave this out. After it was done um, cooking, I let it naturally re release for about 10 minutes and then I turned the vent to manual until it was safe to open up the lid and add the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna add some half and half and I'm also going to pour in my cornstarch slurry. And I didn't really measure the half and half. Sometimes I don't. I just 
just put in about a cup or so of half and half, but I was very pleased with how the potatoes and the carrots cooked. They were nice and cooked, but they weren't really mushy. So I added my half and half, I added my cornstarch slurry, and then I actually left the lid off, but I turned the Instant Pot to the saute function, and I let it saute for about two to three minutes. It came up to a little bit of a simmer and then sauteed for two to three minutes, and that just allowed the cornstarch slurry to activate and for the soup to thicken a little bit and for everything to heat back through. I let it simmer for about three minutes on the saute function and then I switched it to keep warm and I also made sure that I stood right there with it and stirred it while it was simmering because I didn't want it to stick to the bottom of the Instant Pot insert. So I served this with just some cheese and some bacon bits, a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper and some toast and this is, no joke, some of the best potato soup I think I have ever made. I don't think there's anything special about the ingredients but I don't know, it just came together so wonderfully. It was really tasty. I will definitely be making this again because this is something I have the ingredients for a lot of the time. That is what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out the link in the description box below thrivemarket.com slash cmindymom and when you sign up for a new membership don't forget to take advantage of that 40% off your first order offer plus a free gift worth $50. And if you want more C Mindy Mom content and you like vlogs don't forget to check out my vlogging channel. It's actually linked in the description box below as well. See you soon.